that's what you want. Yeah, so uh, uh, human beings are not likely to get off the planet very far. They're not very dangerous to any other civilizations because they just are not, <laughs> they're not cooperative, enough, cooperative enough to actually make an effort to get off the planet. It's going to take the combined efforts of every culture and if somebody's still making war, it's going to eat up resources. So as long as warfare is happening, we, meaning the rest of the cultures, the, the civilizations, not only in this galaxy, but in all other universes, are fairly safe from human treachery and brutality. Human beings are very aggressive and uh, very dangerous from that standpoint, but they will never get anywhere. They're just now learning about wormholes, and they won't learn enough about wormholes in time, because eventually, within a matter of very short time, they'll blow themselves to smithereens. Um, and they're also starting to figure out that uh, interstellar and inter interplanetary travel is nonsense, that it's all wormhole travel. What that means to them, though, they won't get. See, you need to leave, when you go into a wormhole, you pop outside of a given universe, your home, your home world universe. Now you're outside the whole membrane structure entirely, in the void of the void, as it were. And so then you're looking into a plethora, a, a, an infinite, almost infinite, I should say, number of membranes and those membranes each contain a universe. It all, each universe has its own physics, its own rules of physics, all laws of physics. And uh, then you pop into a membrane universe, and there's no telling where you're gonna pop in unless you have coordinates. You have to have uh, X, Y, Z axial coordinates to determine where you're gonna pop in and then you also, when you're gonna pop in. So there's temporal coordinates as well as spatial coordinates. And uh, uh, early on, uh, cultures that are experimenting with interdimensional travel will just go, not realizing that they're not really gonna come back, not necessarily gonna come back to their home dimension, and they're not necessarily gonna come back to the same time in their home dimension, the same time frame. So they learn eventually how to uh, control. Some learn how to control, some don't. The ones that don't have uh, voyagers out there looking around, looking around, but they're never going to get back to their home universe, uh, except by sheer accident. And then the, the, no telling which time frame they'll be in when they do get back there. So you, you have several controls. One of those controls is spatial coordinates, axial coordinates actually and the other one which is called re-entry coordinates and then the other one is temporal coordinates where you also go up and down the time frame see there's, there's a there's a time uh there's an electromagnetic spectrum there's a time space spectrum uh and uh, time and space are modified the same way that am and fm uh systems are to carry a wave actually in a sense and uh, that carrier wave can be modified or modulated. So you're modulated by amplitude, and that creates a spatial uh, core set of coordinates, and then by frequency, and that uh, gives you the temporal coordinates, because of the other way around. Anyway, um, that's how that works. So uh, there's also, uh, there's some, if, there's some iffy things about wormholes, because some wormholes are deadly and some are not. And uh, shielding uh, a, a wormhole, shielding against a wormhole is kind of like shielding, it, like a heat shield on a re-entry capsule, sort of like that. Uh, but you also need to have an impervious structure, a structure that isn't gonna get hit hard by cosmic rays and that kind of thing, high radiation, but one other factor is the event horizon. Uh, when you hit a black hole, at the very rim of the black hole is where you have an event horizon where you can actually remain intact. If you get sucked into the gravity field, the gravity well, 
then you lose it. You have to actually pick up the wormhole right at the rim, right at the actual, uh, at the event horizon of the black hole. So you're looping around that and spinning. So spin has a lot to do with it. Spin uh, is, a, will be a derivative of quirkiness. And quirkiness is where you'll find the ability to withstand the black hole. Otherwise, you'd be crushed because it's, it has nearly infinite gravity. But it also has nearly infinite non-gravity. So it, it, there's a balance game. The event horizon is where that uh, comes into play. And the wormholes develop, uh, can be developed without black holes. You can actually manufacture a wormhole. The wormhole doesn't have to have any particular size, interestingly. It just has to have coordinates, spatial and temporal coordinates. It does not require size. So a big wormhole, small wormhole, those are irrelevant. What actually matters is that it's a connection. It's actually a, it's a, like a wire connection. And you literally go through it as if your electron's going through a wire, in a sense. You get stretched out through the wire, and then they're instantly there. You're at, actually at all places. You're at all locations along the wormhole. And then you are suddenly at the other end of the wormhole. So you're at the beginning of a wormhole, and then you're at all locations and then you're at one location again. So it's a question of setting that. Finding that wormhole is almost impossible. So you need to recreate a wormhole wherever you happen to land or be, and then strap it back to the coordinates that you expect to go to. Now, finding out which coordinates they are, each of the dimensions, there are 11 dimensions, each of the dimensions forms a coordinate. Then each of the membranes is a frequency and then within that frequency which is how they're separated they're separated by frequency but not the kind of frequency that you're thinking of it's a different kind of frequency it's a it's a numerical uh, figure yes but it's not the same as an EMS type uh, frequency then uh, getting the temporal coordinate requires yet another type of frequency uh, actually in that case not frequency so much as amplitude so you get a uh, temporal coordinate, a spatial coordinate, and you also uh, uh, get a coordinate of exactly which universe you're talking about, which universe you're targeting. So the target universe, then there's a target spatial coordinate, or set of coordinates, and then a target temporal set of coordinates. The set of coordinates, because time is actually a three-dimensional uh, structure. Time has three dimensions, just as space has three dimensions. Okay, that's enough right now. Okay.